Welcome back. This time we're talking about the season two premiere of NBC's Timeless, an episode that for a few days at least didn't seem was going to happen after NBC temporarily canceled the series um, late last spring, only to uncancel it a few days later. If you followed my videos reviewing each episode throughout the first season, you know I was a fan of the show, enjoyed the characters, enjoyed the greater mythology that they were creating, and was looking forward to a second season, although I wasn't entirely optimistic that it was going to happen. Fortunately, the final decision they made was to make a second season, so here we are with season two, episode one, The War to End All Wars, which obviously takes our heroes back to the World War I. Now, if you're new to my television reviews, let me say up front that this video will have spoilers for this entire episode as well as previous ones. So if you haven't yet seen this episode, I recommend you pausing this video, go watch the episode, and then come back to hear my thoughts. And then add your own in the comment below. So diving into this episode, it picks up immediately after the end of last season's finale, which ended with a double surprise cliffhanger in that Rittenhouse was not decimated as much as we originally thought. And there's at least two major agents remaining. One being Emma, who turns out apparently was a Rittenhouse agent all along, and Lucy's mother, who reveals in the final moments that not only is she an agent of Rittenhouse, but the descendant of a great Rittenhouse family, making Lucy the equivalent of Rittenhouse royalty. But before we get into that, the episode began with the usual prologue, taking us back to September 1918 amidst the horrific conditions of World War One. There we're introduced to a soldier by the name of Captain Albright, and he has a modern looking cell phone. Um, so that is how we kick off this season. Of course, then we go back to Rufus and Wyatt waiting for Lucy to show up because their plan was to go back and finally um, refigure the timeline to save Lucy's sister. Only there's a bomb in um, Connor Mason's facility and it goes off. And suddenly we're weeks later. Fortunately, our heroes do survive, including Wyatt, Rufus, Jaya, Connor Mason, and Agent Christopher. Unfortunately, 22 other employees do die in the blast, um, which seems to be having a lasting effect on Connor Mason throughout this episode, and I'm assuming as we move forward as well. And this essentially sets up our new status quo where our heroes are presumed dead by the greater world and now must fix the lifeboat and figure out what Rittenhouse plans to use the time machine for. Meanwhile, Lucy is in the clutches of her mother and they're about to go on their first mission together, going back to World War I, along with Emma and a Rittenhouse red shirt. Now, if you saw my review of the season finale, you know I wasn't completely behind both of the sur surprise reveals, um, both Emma's and Lucy's mother's. And I will say they did a better job um, solidifying Emma's turn than they did Lucy's mother, and I'll get into more of that. Um, later, but as far as Emma goes, we find out that um, she really was a long-term mole agent, and she mentions the fact that she spent 10 years in the Old West for Rittenhouse. She'll do essentially anything, um, which does pretty much close the book on whether she may be some kind of triple agent in disguise. Um, the smart thing about this from a writing standpoint, this does give Rittenhouse someone who can actually pilot the time machine because currently the only two that we know of that are still alive are Rufus and Jaya. In any event, their mission is to go back to World War I and find this man, Nicholas Keynes, who seems to have some importance to Rittenhouse. Although it really wasn't likely that Lucy would turn and suddenly join her mother in Rittenhouse, they did a pretty good job of playing everything close to the vest early on, and we're trying to figure out exactly what Lucy is up to, especially when Emma puts her to the test to kill the second soldier that they find who was accompanying Nicholas Keynes, and Lucy does indeed actually kill him, um, which I found rather surprising, but Lucy has always been a pretty analytical person, and she tells 
Wyatt later on in the episode, she knew that if she refused, uh, Emma would kill him anyway and her cover would be blown. She essentially saw this as a suicide mission. She was there to end Rittenhouse's ability to use the timeline no matter the cost, including her mother and her own life. And that's something I did like about this episode. Not only does it um, establish a new status quo as far as the overall mission and as far as their place in the world, um, in that most of them are assumed dead at this point, um, but also emotionally. Um, Wyatt seems to be the most grounded, although he is also very... Um, adamant that he wants to find Lucy. Um, it, it does appear that he has finally um, given up his attempts to save his wife's life and is ready to move on, as we saw in the season finale. Um, but he de definitely seems willing to admit to Lucy that he does have feelings for for her. And um, you know, Rufus is actually encouraging him to do that. Meanwhile, Rufus is dealing with the the idea that he really thought that his life was finally going to go back to normal. Um, he, Rittenhouse was over, they were going to go back and save Lucy's sister, and then he was going to be able to, you know, begin his romance, or continue his romance with Jaya, and find some normalcy where his family is not being threatened with death by a um, maniacal worldwide organization. He wasn't being forced to go back in time and kill people and do all this other horrible things. He really felt that his life was going to go back to normal, and now he knows it's not. And seeing the emotion on his face and seeing how that affected him in this episode was good writing, good acting, and just shows um, how deep these characters are. Meanwhile, Lucy, as I said, um, essentially was ready to give up her life to end Rittenhouse. And she says at the end, when um, her mother and Emma are able to escape, um, and they didn't actually accomplish the mission she set out to do, um, you know, she, was it worth it that she killed this guy? Because n now she has to live with that. She was ready to die. And um, Wyatt sort of calms her down and says, look, we can do this. I'm glad you're alive. The rest of the episode plays out like a relatively normal episode, except that instead of Flynn being our bad guy, we have Lucy's mother, Carol, and Emma being the bad guys and some other Rittenhouse agents. We get to meet Marie Curie, as well as her daughter, and Lucy is able to save them um, from, from extermination by Emma. Um, and that helps set up this sort of dynamic between Emma and Carol, where Carol... Um, obviously is a true believer in Rittenhouse, but it doesn't appear like, unlike Emma and a lot of the others, that she's ever really had to get her hands dirty. Um, it's one thing to believe in the cause and know that people are dying for it um, hundreds of miles and hundreds of years away, but to see it up close, um, you can tell that's not something she's used to. Um, she really thought that she was going to be able to convert her daughter to their cause, and ultimately she was not. And that's something else that Lucy says to Wyatt later, is um, at first she says her mother would not have allowed Emma to kill her, and that would have given her the chance to actually stop everything and made everything worth it. And then he goes, do you really believe that? And she goes, no. She has to, she, so that's something else that she's dealing with, is the fact that her mother would have allowed Emma to kill her to um, continue the Rittenhouse mission. And that mission is ultimately revealed to be taking Nicholas Keynes to present day, because it turns out that he was the one that wrote this manifesto within the Rittenhouse organization back in 1910, to create a time machine and use it to mold the world into their image um, so they essentially don't even have to take it over, that they basically always did have it. And this goes back to one of the big questions from season one. After um, Flynn goes back to the original Rittenhouse founder and ultimately kills him, uh, how much did that change the arc of Rittenhouse? Now, my theory has always been that the past is not changed until they actually go back and do it. So we knew even before that happened 
that Rittenhouse was commissioning a time machine and had plans for it. Um, had um, gone as far as to have Emma be a sleeper agent back in the past for a specific reason that we're still not entirely clear on. But now we know the initial genesis of that being Nicholas Keynes in 1910. Now he could have easily come up with all of these ideas without the um, knowledge of time travelers showing up back in the 1800s. But I'm curious to see if they do tie that in at some point. Now there's a couple of things I wasn't entirely on board with in this episode. The first being I wasn't entirely clear why the Albright character had a modern phone. They said it couldn't actually communicate with others, although potentially once they did go back in time or other agents went back in time, maybe they could connect, but then there's no towers to connect. So I'm not really sure how that would work. And essentially what they found on it were these photos of handwritten documents. Um, I don't know why they went through the risk of having a phone like that in the past when they could have just had papers. Um, if they just wanted copies of documents. Now, obviously, that made it easy for our heroes to recognize that he was Rittenhouse and not, did not belong in that timeline. But internally, I'm not sure how it makes sense. I'm sure we are going to find other agents because we find out that they had been going back in time. They went made 10 trips back in time. Um, at least some of those were presumably to drop off other um, sleeper agents how that all ties in, we don't know yet, but that's essentially going to be, I would assume, the main um, plot moving forward, at least initially. Um, I just don't know why he has the phone. Now, the second thing that I really couldn't, I still don't completely get behind is Lucy's mother. Now, obviously, as she's acting now, that's perfectly fine. The whole twist, I'm still not sure exactly why she acted the way she did throughout the first season, um, encouraging her to not... Um, investigate her father. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that there's going to be an answer to that at some point. Um, I guess because they just didn't want the timeline to move forward too quickly um, as far as her realizing that he was involved with Rittenhouse. I really don't know at this point, um, but that's still somewhat confusing to me. But speaking of her, that does um, lead us to the final gut punch of this episode, which is when Emma claims... And when I say claims, it seems very likely that it did happen, that she did go back in time and um, did something or some things to ensure that Lucy's sister will never exist. She essentially murdered her out of existence, even though she already was out of existence. Uh, presumably that means killing the guy that um, her mother would have eventually met. Um... Lucy's mother doesn't really have a huge reaction to that, and it makes sense because um, she knows that in that alternate timeline, um, she was suffering from a debilitating disease that was, was had already taken her mind and was about to take her life. Um, but that was a huge blow to Emma. Wyatt has essentially given up his initial mission of going back in time, which was to find a way to save his wife. Lucy's was to stop Flynn and to save her sister and Rufus was there because he was going to get murdered if he wasn't. Um, so how all that's going to tie in we don't know. The other um, open thread from the finale is Jaya's sickness. We do hear from Connor Mason at one point saying that she's had multiple episodes and it wasn't even noon that day. Um, some of Most of these episodes appear to be the fainting um, variety rather than the um, everything goes back in time, although we didn't actually see it from her point of view, so maybe that happens every time she has one of those episodes. We don't really know yet. And then finally we get to the, the final reveal where we find out that Nicholas Keynes is Carol's grandfather. She was not lying that she came from deep Rittenhouse blood. How all of that is going to tie in specifically, we don't know, but considering it, it appeared that Keynes would have died without the interference of Rittenhouse. He had already father, fathered Carol's um, own parent, father or mother, we don't know at this point yet. Um, so more family fun for Lucy. So this was a very strong episode, um, some fun. Like I said, they, they, it was a good continuation from the cliffhanger of last season. 
um, it actually paid off the cliffhanger, uh, unlike a lot of the cliffhangers um, in individual episodes throughout the first season, something that I mentioned multiple times. Um, but overall, it was an episode I liked. Uh, I, I am enjoying this new status quo and really looking forward to seeing where the show goes in season two, um, especially since it's probably unlikely that we're going to get a season three, but let's just see. Um, but for now... What did you think of this episode? What did you think of the new status quo? Um, how Rittenhouse um, is apparently setting up all these d deep sleeper agents um, to um, make changes to the past at particular points. Um, please comment below. Let me know what you thought. As always, you can subscribe to my channel. Check out some of my other reviews. And until next time, be careful whose car you steal.